Everybody wants to see Ukraine, one of the largest countries in Europe with a stable economic situation because instability in Ukraine can bring instability in the whole region. Once Kiev Mayor Vitaly Klitschko said, everybody wants to see Ukraine, one of the largest countries in Europe with a stable economic situation because instability in Ukraine can bring instability in the whole region. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Najmul Islam. You are watching Natural Civilization program at Natural TV. Today we will talk on Ukraine, Ukraine and future of the Ukraine between East and West. We know Ukraine is the very much important countries in geostrategically, geoeconomically, and we will talk, we will see the socio-political development of Ukraine. As we know the, the recent election and after the recent election uh, in Ukraine, we see the five major topics in Ukraine and in Kiev and its partners busy in 2019 and beyond. None are easy, they include politics, domestic reform, gas, relations with the European Union and the Donbass conflict. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we will talk on this issue with our scholar and a researcher um, who, is, who is working on Ukraine and uh, Ukraine position in Europe, Ukraine's relations with Turkey, Ukraine's relations with Western countries and uh, Eastern countries. As we see, we have a guest and a scholar and researcher who is working on Ukraine, Ukraine's geostrategic position, Ukraine's position in Europe, and Ukraine's bilateral and strategic relations with European Union and uh, Eastern countries like uh, Russia, China, and India. Let's talk on Ukraine and Ukraine issue with Rihanna Tevkova. Welcome to our program, Rihanna Tevkova, to talk on uh, Ukraine issue. Thank you very much. Uh, Miss Rihanna, uh, as you are living in Turkey, you are doing a PhD and um, as you are focusing on your PhD like Turkey and uh, so Ukraine relations, also Turkey and Russian strategic relations. So uh, before going to that discussion like on um, Ukraine and Ukraine's uh, background, history, independence, uh, those kind of stuff. Before this, could you please uh, tell us like um, your activities uh, uh, like your specialization, your experts in uh, international relations and uh, the area that you cover. <laughs> Hello, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Rihanna, as you told, and currently I'm doing my PhD in Gazi University in international relations. As you told, I'm writing my thesis uh, on the topic of uh, Turkey-Russia relationships and actually the most important thing that I'm trying to highlight is the impact of Western factor in Turkey-Russia alliance formation within the last 15-20 years. And uh, of course, taking into consideration this topic, we understand that Ukraine as the strategically important partner both of Turkey and uh, a neighbor of Russia um, make an impact on this topic as well. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, we understand like you are actually covering, that's what we uh, tell like, and also you are um, focusing your PhD on this issue. And I believe like for our viewers, it will be really much more interesting issue to know more about Ukraine and the uh, uh, geographical location of Ukraine and geostrategic position of Ukraine. Um, but uh, before this, you know, as you mentioned, you come in Turkey and doing PhD. I, how do you find actually Turkey? Um, Turkey is a really nice country. I love it so much. Uh, as I told you, this is my fifth year. And uh, since 2014, I have only positive experience in Turkey because uh, Turkey first uh, is very warm with its hospitality. Uh, Turkish people are very friendly and uh, all the time we have uh, very good impressions about this country, about its culture. Uh, it is very um, comfortable country for the foreigners and everyone can uh, feel himself like at home. Now I can say that this is my second home. Oh, really great things actually. I think that most of the international students and uh, international experts who are working in Turkey and uh, doing their uh, research uh, in, uh, and living in here, they have uh, the same experiences about the Turkey and Turkish people. Uh, by the way, like I just want to ask you, like, uh, uh, let's go to our deep discussion on Ukraine. Like, how do you um, uh, do want to tell to our to us like about the Ukraine's uh, historical background, uh, especially with the civilizational roots of Ukraine? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Ukraine, like modern Ukraine, is quite young state, and um, uh, it is about twenty. Eight, twenty-nine years old. Uh, so, uh, yeah, in 1991, uh, it got its independence from the Soviet Union when Soviet Union was collapsed, and after that, we started our civilizational search and start to make our civilizational choices. Before Ukraine uh, was a uh, country, like it started from the Kievan Rus, where there were different tribes, and uh, uh, all the time um, the. Um, regional and global powers were uh, competing for this territory. If we look at the political map, we will see the geographical position of Ukraine is in the heart of the uh, Europe, uh, not the European Union, but Europe. And uh, we see that this creates additional advantages and uh, troubles for Ukraine at the same time. That's that, that's what like in international relations said like the uh, sometimes the advantages in uh, per geostrategic position it um, uh, can be a blessing and can be also a curse. Exactly, yeah. that's what we can say about Ukraine and current uh, political situation demonstrates it very well. By the way, like uh, as you already said, like Ukraine's uh, position in Europe and it makes it gives much more importance for Ukraine. But as we know, this Ukraine's neighbor, like uh, Russia, and on the other hand, Ukraine's neighbor, like uh, from European Union countries, our European countries. So, so it, within this situation or within this geographical location, uh, how do you see this the importance in which sector the importance of Ukraine, um, uh, especially geostrategic importance of Ukraine? Uh, we could say that uh, Ukraine as the largest country in Europe is important both geographically and politically for all of the regional powers surrounding uh, us. And uh, we could say that both for Russia and for the European Union, uh, Ukraine um, plays, uh, like plays a very important role. As speaking of Dzerzhinsky said in his uh, chessboard uh, game, uh, he said that those who um, controls Ukraine, those who owns the Ukraine, owns the whole uh, Eurasia. And the Russia without Ukraine is just a Eurasian, Asian empire. It cannot have more global impact on that. That's why uh, we see that Russia is striving for increasing its control on Ukraine. Uh, before it was more um, economical, but now we see more um, aggressive and uh, uh, hard power yeah. methods that really um, create completely new reality for Ukraine and for the population of our country. So as we can say, like for your speech, it's very clear like how Russia uh, is uh, interpreting and intervening in uh, Ukrainian issue. And uh, as we see the recent Putin's uh, offensive foreign policy towards Ukraine, especially in the issue of Crimea and also Donbas, I mean the areas and is also intervening in domestic uh, politics of Ukraine. Um, so like how do you see this the Putin's this kind of offensive uh, foreign policy? How do you, do, can you analyze this, that's the issue? Uh, the, of our uh, Russians' foreign policy towards uh, Ukraine? That's a really great question, because uh, for answering it, I prefer to give you such a background when it started. As you know, in 2014, 2013 actually, Ukraine started the revolution, which was called the Revolution of Dignity. It was a revolution made by Ukrainian youth, which demonstrated its position for being more European, because we had uh, a very complex uh, government uh, full of some uh, bureaucratic and corruptional uh, connections. And uh, as you know, our president, in the result of the revolution, uh, ex escaped to Russia. Uh, this kind of troubles, um, of course, um, created additional treat for Russia because uh, the whole population of Ukraine said clearly that we want to be closer to the European Union, the European Union values, and we want to reform our economy and country according to European Union standards. This uh, created additional distance between our mentality and Russian mentality that used to control the whole near abroad. It's not only connected with Ukraine. The same situation happened in Georgia in, 20, in 2008 when you know that the uh, military uh, intervention to the uh, yeah. South Ossetia and this territory has the same um, status now, like it's isolated and not um, approved and accepted uh, area, like black 
whole and the political map. Uh, of course, we need to understand that uh, Russia uh, tried to manipulate with Ukraine, forcing to enter to the customs union. Customs union creates some uh, limits for our uh, freedom of choice in the um, economic way. We, would, we wouldn't be able to cooperate with the European countries, create bilateral agreements in case if we were a part of this customs union. So the um, associated agreement that was signed between Ukrainian, newly elected after this revolution, government and the European Union demonstrated our European Western choice. It was also uh, specified in our constitution that Ukrainian vector of integration is West and the European Union and one of the priorities is to be a member of European Union and be a member of NATO. So like uh, you know this uh, uh, when you are talking about this issue it's very much clear that uh, peoples of Ukraine uh, they are uh, much more pro-European rather than I mean like a uh, pro-Russian it's a very clear statement and that what Russian offensive uh, and uh, hard power they are using towards the Ukraine and uh, to take up or like occupying some land from the Ukraine it's a uh, very clear mess from the uh, peoples of Ukraine that's okay um, we are loving people uh, to European Union rather than our European countries rather than Russia by the way like you know the recently there was an election in um, in Ukraine and some you know the newspaper and the recent articles even the literature uh, argue like this way the Ukraine democratic uh, politics changed fundamentally in 2019 on May 20 you know this um, uh, your current uh, president uh, Zelensky was inaugurated as a president of Ukraine and the country's parliamentary election will likely reconfigure much of the governing elite and lead to deep changes in the country's legislative, executive, and judicial branches. So my question is to you actually, how do you see this a possible political development in Ukraine? Because it shows like um, the, the new president, he got 70% of vote in uh, election and it means that he can change actually the every part. I mean, that's the three organ of the, any administration, the judicial, um, executive, and legislative. So how do you see the, the uh, future political development of uh, uh, Ukraine? Yes, as I told you, Ukraine is quite a young country and uh, our uh, choices uh, in um, elections and votes usually uh, create the completely uh, different uh, reloads of the whole political system in the country. So with the current elections that we saw, what we saw uh, in Ukraine when Mr. Zelensky, the person which was, who was far away from politics, uh, he was a comedian and businessman and uh, after the elections he became the president, uh, also had another success uh, in parliamentary elections where his political party which was newly established after he was elected as a president, won these elections and uh, got the parliamentary uh, majority. So it demonstrates that Ukraine now, uh, although we have a very complex uh, demographic situation, like uh, not all of the Ukrainian people support Western vector of integration, I should say that uh, both we have both Ukrainians and Russian people historically because of the Soviet past we have this mixture of different nationalities, different languages, we speak in different regions like both Ukrainian and Russian language and this question is highly manipulated in Ukraine but I should say that uh, Zelensky uh, with uh, his political force uh, really um, reached a record. Ukraine. Yes, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the um, party's name is Sluga Naroda, which uh, means the people's. So we can mm -hmm. check it. Yeah. Um, so his political party, I can say that. Um, I, I should say that we don't know exactly what they can contribute to our country because okay. they don't have any political experience. We have never... Even, you know, this. Uh, I just want to uh, uh, mention, uh, no, I just want to add one, uh, to, uh, one more thing. You know, last uh, couple of days, I'm just reading some newspaper, uh, especially the Washington Post and uh, Guardian and even also New York Times. And uh, the, some newspaper tried to in, uh, introduce him like a, 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 from comedian to the politics. And even I personally w watching his uh, comedy video and uh, he was trying to make a fun as a president. So like, how do you see that? Uh, as you already mentioned that he don't have experience and his party don't have experience but from that things and he also got uh, most, uh, most of the people's mandate 
and a democratic way in an elected or election he, they, they are also elected so like how do you think this will it be the good effectivity for a political development for of uh, ukraine i strongly believe that in such a complicated period of ukraine when we have the war in the eastern part and uh, in the south we have the annexed territory where we cannot have access like there is no ukrainian military forces we cannot send our uh, monitoring missions there we need strong leader strong leader with a huge background both in political and economic field who knows really what he needs to do to protect our national interests. But the problem is in the whole world, you know, this, the most of the political uh, experience is that they are corrupted. <laughs> yes, that's the problem. That's why Ukraine made this choice. Uh, the uh, disappointment of the political elites uh, showed the uh, value of the democracy in our country. Because Ukraine is a country, like if you, try, if you ask me how can I characterize Ukraine, Ukraine is a country which adores freedom. And uh, we really know what is a democracy. Uh, in 2014, people died for us. And uh, we know what is the value of freedom. That's why uh, we, if we give the responsibility for a certain person, he should understand that this responsibility uh, should be met with certain steps, real, measurable uh, steps in a certain period of time. So populistic. Uh, slogans are not for our country anymore because we don't have time and don't have opportunity to uh, spend, to waste uh, uh, valuable periods of time when we need to invest this time and uh, money, resources uh, for the future of our country and uh, not to lose in a political uh, situation. because. You know that our neighbor is um, a very strong and the methods that he applies to us, I mean like uh, the Kremlin's methods are very hard and unbearable, not only for Ukraine, but a strong regional, uh, regional powers. But you see this as you mentioned, like uh, the uh, populistic idea or populistic, uh, I mean, you know, propaganda, what we can say, like uh, it's not um, that much uh, acceptable in Ukrainian society. But the issue, you know, as we see, like from USA to um, like even also recent election in United Kingdom, it shows that the everywhere actually the populistic idea and populist leaders are coming to the power. Even also, if we see the most of the new political parties, including the Ukraine also, uh, uh, when they are coming to power, it can show such that they should, I mean, they may use some populist idea. So why you are not agree with this statement in terms or in based on your, your country, I mean, Ukraine? I mean that uh, populism mm -hmm. is what we saw for 25 years and we fed up of it. And I can say that uh, Zelensky has a very important mission now and I hope he will have enough expertise and a strong team to implement all of the steps because if he reaches this kind of support from the country, like from the population, and 73% is not a small amount of votes uh, that demonstrate that the country is more or less united and supported him and uh, the parliamentary elections and support of his political party also shows that so uh, they give him authority to implement the promises that he says also he uh, is quite modern and he understand that the 21st century needs completely new innovative methods and this kind of promises which was unique and wasn't um, like more common for another uh, representatives of uh, old uh, political elites show that he has a certain political advantage I, I, I know this uh, like even also um, I think that our viewers even this uh, even the in internationally actually they are very much interested to know the background of the, your current president because uh, as I asked you before the whole media even I saw so many international media uh, from Asia to Europe even also the African media they try to mention like uh, very much interested to know about him even I saw this some newspaper they try to show him like a people's leader because when he came to the power he said like the uh, president picture should not to be in a you know world and it should to be the your children picture I mean he said some good things and the whole media is talking about the say okay this is the leader or something the positively they try to introduce him in a positively but the issue is I mean I'm, I feel like the or our viewers will be the happy and if you tell like how he was interested to involve with politics I mean because even two, two, one year ago I think like he don't have any plan to involve with politics 
what actually makes him influence him to make it i think that uh, this was a good project because uh, before he was uh, playing a main role in one serious movie uh, where he played the president of ukraine yeah. and i think this was the brightest uh, his connection with the ukrainian politics because they were trying to laugh on the whole of the problems that we had uh, frankly speaking ukrainian people also don't know what can he do for our country because we haven't seen his like previous experience in this field uh, this is the experiment political experiment that ukrainian people do for their own future and this was the choice that will result in a certain um, like measurable uh, factors that we will can uh, we will be able to measure later uh, i would say more Without parliamentary elections, we couldn't judge about Zelensky because um, the parliamentary structure could be completely different. Now he has the vertical because both parliament and the presidential uh, power is concentrated in his hands. And I hope he will use it for the um, constructing and uh, reviving the uh, good image of Ukraine in the international level. And also I would like to say that our previous president, Poroshenko, he really reached a great success in international politics. For now, within these two months of Zelensky's presidency, I couldn't see that he could follow his way. Uh, he, of course, said that we still uh, keeps going on and our vector is west and we are trying to be close to the European Union. But he didn't do clear steps and uh, I don't know whether he could continue his path, but I'm sure that uh, our national interests should be dominant um, in any given decision that our president and and this is pretty interesting that you uh, put it in uh, the discussion. But uh, as you see that the, the world's uh, politics is now shifting, I mean, from Europe or from Western to the Asia, especially the rising uh, of China and also the India uh, from one perspective. So uh, in this case, I mean, also from you, it's very clear that Ukrainians uh, are pro-European and their peoples love to be involved, involved with uh, more in European-centric and European policy-centric. but. You also see this, how the China is uh, emer emerge and Chinese uh, policy is emerging towards the whole world, especially in economic sector. So how do you see this, the, the Chinese uh, policy, I mean, towards uh, Ukraine, China, Ukraine relations, even also the uh, India, in other hand, there's also growing power countries, like what will be the Ukraine's uh, policy towards uh, India? Uh, I think that um, Ukraine understands that this, um, richness of the country especially in agrarian and uh, um, like mineral resources field uh, should be used reasonably and uh, of course china and india uh, are very important trade partners for ukraine um, as we know um, ukraine as the one of the biggest agrarian country in europe uh, today supplies plenty well, it has a very uh, important export uh, fields of um, grain crops to china that uh, gives us of course some additional uh, uh, income generated um, budget um, articles uh, but we should understand also that we have all of the economic um, choices that country does, it should do in the framework of the political choices. Because politics is the concentration of the economic choices of the country. It's like the, according to the um, international relations and international politics, we could see, we could see this clearly. And uh, I think that uh, the cooperation between China and India, um, like Ukraine, China, Ukraine, India, will keep going on and they will have strong economic ties. Uh, Ukraine has a very strong production of heavy machinery, like uh, we produce uh, wagons, planes and airspace engineering. I'm sure that uh, good investments from China and India can create some uh, innovative uh, projects that will be like, profitable and uh, which will benefit to both sides, both Asian mm -hmm. uh, powers like, uh, and uh, to uh, Ukraine. From the economic side, of course, like for any countries to make a trade partners or business partners in whole world, it's of course the uh, 
appreciable and it's acceptable and it's okay but the other thing you know the china uh, when they are rising they have a good relation with russia and uh, uh, if we see the geostrategic uh, position and geostrategic level of uh, ukraine ukraine has a problem i mean they have a historical problem with russia and in on other hand we see the china and russia they have a good friends and they are both countries they are really emerging countries especially the china is as i told before so like in this case like how you think like uh, ukraine can make a check and balance from a strategic part i'm sure that the trade partners uh, should be uh, balanced and if we look at the basket of the uh, trade partners we need to to differentiate it as much as possible uh, we understood it with Russia because uh, we usually had the different kind of economic restrictions from the gas or some energy resources that were supplied for, from Russia's side. And now I'm sure that Ukraine will not do the same mistake. Uh, Asian partners are important for us as well as the Western partners and uh, the um, trade, the international trade and export import, import fields according to the um, country specialization is very important. I'm not sure that Ukraine will do um, will choose one uh, partner trade partner in favor of another one. It shouldn't be like that. But uh, nowadays uh, everything should be balanced, and uh, Ukraine is the country which will be able to to do a correct choice in this field. By the way, like you are the you know Turkish uh, fellow, Turkish scholarship fellow. You are doing your PhD in Turkey under Turkish government scholarship. So as a fellow of Turkish government scholarship and following up the even also Turkish strategic relations uh, towards uh, Ukraine, Russia, uh, even also Turkish position in the whole region from Europe to Africa, Africa to you know Asia. Uh, so my question actually to you: How do you see this Turkish uh, soft power to um, in Ukraine? I will ask actually some more questions, but the first question is the Turkish soft power in Ukraine. Um, I think uh, Turkey is a really strong country and its soft power instruments are very important to demonstrate to the whole world the uh, beauty and at the same time the uh, economic and political strength of this country. Because as we know there are plenty of informational instruments nowadays and the different kind of propaganda can create a wrong image of the country. So uh, this kind of projects um, that Turkey created and now spread it through all over the world are very good and quality for its image. Uh, concerning Ukraine, um, these soft power instruments are not so um, concentrated in Ukrainian area because um, uh, there are some institutions like UNUSEMRE Institute and um, uh, and other foundations uh, which are working there. TICA, which yeah. really made a great yeah, contribution. Yeah, yeah. Turkey scholarship and the project of presidency for Turks abroad and related communities. Uh, there are not so many students who are coming from Ukraine uh, to Turkey, but I'm sure this um, number will increase definitely in the future because really the education low level of Turkey is quite good and compatible comparing to the European countries. Uh, maybe because of some cultural differences, Ukrainian students prefer to go to the Western countries such as Poland and another stuff. But uh, I would say that all of my friends who are studying here, like from Ukraine, they definitely have a um, good image of this country and try to um, continue uh, the communication and cooperation with Turkey even coming back to Ukraine. By the way, like as I told you before, like uh, the, the opposite of following the question of Turkey's soft power, it shows like uh, uh, Turkey, even you know, recently Turkey is making a very uh, strategic, even also good relation with Russia. So, do you think is it actually a trade for Ukraine? I mean, like when Turkey is making a good relation with Russia? Yes, and it's also a trade for Turkey. Uh, uh, because um, I, as a person who is studying the alliance formation between Turkey and Russia, I could say that uh, Turkey makes very important choices in international uh, politics now and uh, now it's a regional power uh, which status is uh, very important and, uh, and other countries global powers now started to listen to Turkish opinion that uh, makes me proud about that country 
uh, coming to relations with Russia, I could say that uh, Russia is not a stable partner. We saw it uh, during the jet crisis when Russia was quite aggressive and um, um, applied very strict measures to uh, hurt Turkish economy. Um, the um, strategic partners cannot behave like that, but uh, I hope that uh, Turkish cooperation with Russia will not affect Turkish relations with Ukraine because uh, Turkey as well as Ukraine is situated in a very important and dangerous um, crossroad of West and East Europe. Yeah. But, but, but as you are working on, because you say you are working on, you are focusing your even also PhD thesis on Turkey Russia, uh, Russian strategic relations. But you know the recent incident it shows Turkey uh, they actually they don't have a, that much option uh, to move because they have to uh, change their policy, shift their policy from uh, what we see as European or NATO member countries like uh, relation or taking like um, those kind of stuff like F thirty five or from USA rather than they take, already took. Um, is uh, uh, 400 from Russia. So, uh, like, uh, can we uh, so, no, argue like this way? Actually, Turkey did a very good choice. I mean, uh, in compared like uh, to protect their national security. Uh, so, uh, if you ask me as a Ukrainian citizen, I, I will yeah, yeah. analyze it like that. But uh, as a specialist of international relations, I would say that Turkey uh, do very correct steps now to become a regional power and it actually is a regional power now uh, especially syrian conflict create plenty of traits but turkey used them very good to um, turn it to the benefit uh, now uh, uh, there is no alternative for turkey uh, yeah, I can agree with that because um, this is the security issue that Turkey is able to solve using uh, Russian uh, military technologies. Why not? But uh, we need to understand that protecting your own national interest is also important. And I'm sure that Turkey as a strong country that knows how to protect them and uh, not to create troubles with uh, another ally, which was uh, very important for Turkey before like NATO. Uh, overall, uh, like when we are overall discussing about this, the uh, Ukraine and Ukrainian position, Ukraine's politics, socio-political development, um, but in this whole process, like, uh, could you please tell us about the civil society and think tanks, academicians' role, and how they are participating in this kind of uh, situation, like uh, in a conflict situation, in a uh, peaceful situation, in a problematic situation, in a crisis or instability. Yeah, I could say that uh, the uh, role of NGOs uh, after 2014, after this invasion to Ukraine, cannot be underestimated. Uh, our um, NGOs uh, and volunteering groups uh, helped a lot to, um, to save uh, lives of people in Don Donetsk after this, uh, some uh, like military operations that were made from the side of Russia and the terrorists uh, of Daner and Daner and Lener. And uh, I could say that uh, today um, this NGO sector is developing. Of course, we need to give them more opportunities and especially the problem is in funding because so when we come to the um, this kind of civil society organizations and NGOs, uh, they need to have a certain um, income sources. And that's the problem and um, different international funds and uh, some international organizations support Ukraine and one of these international organizations is UNHCR. For example, I can Mm, say about the Crimea sauce. Crimea sauce is one of the uh, NGO which was organized uh, after the revolution and uh, during the revolution and dignity and still it's working and they prepare very important uh, reports about the human rights violation in Crimea and Donbass. We could say that uh, today this is the work of the um, huge think tanks in other countries but one of the NGOs which was created and quite young can do a very a hard, complicated and objective work today. So I can say that the results of these NGOs are important and their contribution is um, infinite.
um, again, actually, Russia, you know, this, um, uh, I, I think this is very co complicated and very interesting issue uh, uh, because, you know, as we see the recently Russia, they are trying to capture, I mean, the occupy the uh, Crimea and as I know you are from also Crimea. So how do you t see like this uh, future of Crimea and also the issue between the Ukraine and Russia? I could say that, unfortunately, today Crimean issue is not so spoken um, all over the world because there are plenty of other conflicts, but I can say that today uh, Crimea is really in trouble. The human rights violation that's happened there, like, monthly we can follow it, and every day we start with the news to see who else is political prisoner in Crimea. Uh, some of our political leaders cannot enter to Crimea to a uh, home, um, to their own motherland, and that's the problem. And uh, actually, I think that the future of Crimea depends on the active position of international organizations and global powers, such as the United States and uh, uh, European Union, which should not neglect this issue because the Crimean security and security in the Black Sea is the security of the whole Europe. Um, today, the conflict in Ukraine creates troubles and uh, changes the security conjuncture in the whole Europe. And uh, sometimes the um, hybrid war instrument that Russia applies for uh, making the Crimean issue not so important and uh, delete this question from uh, international politics agenda uh, makes me like concern. I'm worrying about the future of Crimea and the future of the whole um, like security situation. If I'm not if I'm not wrong, the Russia they are playing like for example like when it comes to China, Xinjiang, uh, Xinjiang uh, province or Kashmir in India and Pakistan or like a uh, uh, Rohingya problem in uh, I mean the, in Arakan and the Myanmar. I mean uh, they are try to you know this uh, um, oppose every kind of and they are making battle in United Nations because they have uh, one problem in Crimea. If I'm not wrong, they try to make a check and balance actually, then nobody can talk even also their problem and how they are right. occupying this Crimean issue. I don't know whether, whether you will agree or disagree. I think that today Russia is able to use different kind of instruments to uh, delete it, to erase this issue from agenda. But uh, international powers should understand that this issue is cannot be forget, forgotten as the issue of Abkhazia, as the issue of Transnistria, as the issue of South Ossetia. Because these conflicts are still manipulated. For example, the conflict in Karabakh, that is a, a conflict which is managed at the suitable time for Russia, or like uh, this Armenian-Azerbaijan issue is very, very tough and still there is no brief solution, uh, concrete solution. Today, Ukraine, uh, for Ukraine, the same um, solution methods are offered like Minsk group that cannot be the way out. And I'm sure that um, today the world's world should find out which kind of instrument they should use, especially in international uh, law field area Definitely. to protect the interests of the all countries. By the way, that's our time almost. Uh, I'm going to finish. I, mean, I just want to the last question. I mean, uh, the, uh, it's about like, uh, you know, this as you even also the good example, even though so many uh, um, citizens of Ukraine living in European Union and other countries. So the, how do you assess the Ukrainian diaspora in abroad and uh, uh, in your opinion, in your opinion, how you want to see the future of Ukraine? Ukraine diaspora is playing a very important role uh, because um, this kind of uh, political issue that we have can be um, increased and the, uh, the image of Ukraine can be improved by diaspora. You know that there are plenty of uh, Ukrainian people who are living in Turkey and Russia and Canada, where is one of the biggest diaspora of Ukraine there uh, in European Union. But uh, our people all the time have connection with our country. All of us are following the Ukrainian news more than we follow the news of the geography we are living in. And uh, I think that Ukraine has a bright future because we are a really rich country, smart country, a uh, country with uh, uh, very active youth and uh, um, unstoppable uh, striving for freedom. I'm sure that uh, in the nearest future we will see the very good both political and uh, economical results that our efforts can bring. 
Oh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Riyadna. You give us a uh, very really lot of information and uh, very important information about Ukraine and not only also Ukraine. You give us the, the whole geographical uh, and geostrategical uh, position of Ukraine and uh, especially from Turkey to European Union to Russia to USA to uh, China, India. And it's really great information. And I believe like our viewers will learn and will uh, know so many things and different things and deep information on uh, your country ukraine and uh, i really thank you so much to come to our uh, program natural civilization program and uh, thank you so much our uh, viewers to be with us and uh, we believe you will be with us for our next episode and we welcome to you watch and to be with us for every time and every day with the natural civilization at natural tv